Hello, dear students. Together in our lesson today, we're going to revise the modal verbs. When we're talking about a revision, we're going to see some of the uses or some of the modal verbs. And then in our lessons that we're going to have, uh, we're going to see them in details. So, let's deal with the modal verbs can, could, and may. Well, I know that many of you have many examples in your minds. Let's see some of those together. We can see this boy, this is Peter. Peter is 10 years old. He can read and write. He can do that. This shows an ability of his. He can read and write. He can go to school maybe on his own. And of course, that refers to the present. But Peter, when he was a baby, when he was eight months old, he couldn't read or write, but he could play with his toys. So, he can read and write, can, ability in the present. He could play with his toys, ability in the past, when he was eight months old. Affirmative form, positive, he could do. Negative form, he couldn't read. So we have the basic difference between can and could. Can, ability in the present, could, ability in the past. When we're talking about a formal situation and we want to ask about something, we use the modal verb may. And we want to be polite. May I show you something, sir? May I? So, I'm asking for permission. I want to be polite. But when the boy wants to ask from his dad, he can use may or he can simply use can. Can I play with my friends after school, dad? So, the boy is asking for permission from his dad. Can I do this? Can I do that? I'm asking. I want for my dad to tell me yes or no. Whereas this one is much more polite. It is formal. Let's continue and see the words, the modal verbs. Must, mustn't and needn't. Must is a strong word. It's something that shows us an uh, something that is strong, that is maybe the law, that should be done, absolutely. So we have the conversation between Dad and Rick. Rick was trying to cook and he was trying to cut with the knife, but he thought that it was something like a game. And something happened and he cut his finger. So he is asking his dad, what uh, is going to happen and that answers you must be careful Rick you mustn't play with knives so the word must here shows an obligation you must be careful it's a strong word so it's not should I do this or that I must be careful in order to take care of myself and when dad says, you mustn't play, this shows a prohibition. So something that the boy should not do. He mustn't play with knives. It is not a game. Rick is asking his dad, must we go to the doctor, dad? So we can see another use of the word must. So must we go? This shows a necessity. Is it necessary for me to go to the doctor? Do we have to go to the doctor? And dad says, after taking a look at his finger, it's fine. And he's saying, no, we needn't go to the doctor. It will be all right. The word needn't, the modal verb, shows lack of necessity. So it's not necessary to go to the doctor. So we said, 
must, it's something strong, should be done. Mustn't, again it's strong, shouldn't be done. And needn't, when it's not necessary. You can do it, but it's fine even if you don't do that. And now, I would like you to complete the words must, mustn't and needed in this conversation that we have between the boss and the secretary. Have you typed those letters yet? No, says the secretary. I haven't finished. So she's asking. Which word is she going to use to ask? I type them all this morning. So must I type them all this morning? And the boss says, yes, you, of course, you're going to use the same word, the same model verb. Yes, you must, I'm afraid. The secretary is asking again and is saying, very well, sir. Again, the same word. Must I also photocopy them? The boss answers, no, you. In order to find out which word is missing, take a look at uh, what is following. Eric can do that. So there is no need for you to do, to photocopy them, because Eric can do that. So, no, you needn't. It's not necessary for you to do it. And the secretary answers, okay, I'll do that. So I will ask Eric, Oh, sir, you've got an appointment with uh, Mr. Lee at 6 o'clock. It's almost 5.30. You, what? You shouldn't do something. So you mustn't be late. Oh, dear, I forgot. I will go now. And the secretary says, do you want me to call your wife and tell her that you will be late? And the boss answers no you in order to find the missing part take a look at how it continues i will call her so the boss will call his wife so there is no need it's not necessary for the secretary to uh, call so we're going to use the word needn't of course you needn't do that I will call her. Let's move on and let's see the modal verbs shall and will. Take a look at the picture. We have the mother and the little girl. Mom, shall I help you water the flowers? The little girl is offering her help to the mother. Shall I help you? She's being polite, of course, and she's also offering her help. Whereas, if we use the word will in this shop, the little girl now is asking from her mother, Mom, will you buy me this little doll? So, is requesting from her mother to buy a little doll. So, keep in mind, when we use shall, it's always with the first person. Shall I or shall we? And we offer our help. We offer something. Shall I help you? Whereas, when we ask for something, we use the word will, the modal verb will. Will you buy me? So I'm asking from you to buy something. Will you help me? I'm asking from you to help me. So let's practice a little bit. We have the situation. The car needs washing. Your father is busy. What does he say to you? First of all, think. Dad needs some help. And since she, he needs some help, we are going to use which model verb? I'm going to ask for some help. Of course, we're going to use will. 
One possible question could be Will you wash the car, please? Or will you help me with the car, please? Or will you do me a favor? But we're using the modal verb will to ask for some help. Let's see a different situation. So, you have given your friend some coffee. She tells you it tastes bitter. What do you say to her? In this case, you are not asking for something. You want to offer something else. So one of the situations, one of the sentences that you could say to her is Shall I add some more sugar? So, in the first situation, the father is asking for some help. Will you help me? Will you wash the car? In the second situation, you want to offer something. You want to offer your help. You want to offer some sugar. You want to offer maybe another cup of coffee. And you're saying, shall I add some more sugar? Let's move on and let's see. Must, must and may or will in some situations. This is some practice for you. Please, it is not difficult for you to find out the answer. But always look at both uh, um, conversations or exchanges that we have. We have the boy that is saying something, is asking his dad, and the answer from dad. Don't rush to find directly the answer. Always read the exchange, read them both so that it makes sense. So we can see that the boy is a little bit bored and he says, Dad, I come with you? Somebody could say directly, may I come with you? Can I come with you? But don't rush. Read the answer from Dad. No, you needn't. You needn't means it's not necessary. So since it's not necessary, to go with dad, the question should be, dad, must I come with you? So do I have to come with you? And dad is answering, no, you needn't. So there isn't any uh, necessity in coming. We are now in an office and the man is asking, I go now? The answer from the other person in the office is, Yes, you may. Thank you for coming. So, in order to be polite, it also helps to read, we said, the answer. Since it says, yes, you may, it is very easy for you to find the answer. That is, of course, may I go now? So, as you can see, in order to find the correct answer, read what the other person says and this helps you a lot. Let's move on and let's see one more uh, conversation. We have the little girl that is asking her mother, can I sit next to the fire? And the mother is answering, no, you, Natalie, it's dangerous. We talked about that modal verb that shows us that we should not do something that is a prohibition, that is dangerous to do that. So we're going to use the modal verb mustn't. You mustn't do that. You mustn't sit next to the fire because it is dangerous. And this girl wants some help and is asking her sister, Stella, you help me clean the carpet, please. Remember what we said when we want to ask for some help, when we want to request help? We're going to use the modal verb will. So Stella, will you help me clean the carpet, please? Yes, sure, sister. All right. 
So we finished with a very, very short revision of the modal verbs. Can for ability in the present, could for ability in the past, may when you want to ask for something for permission, or shall when you want to offer some help, or will when you want to ask for some help. There are many other modal verbs, but we are going to see them analytically in the other lessons. Goodbye.